Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the On Fire B2B podcast, podcast where we take business owners and CEOs, B2B space. Six questions, nine minutes, because the best know when to be concise and when to end. And let's get to it. Question number one in a few sentences tell us who you are and what do you do? Well, first of all, Bob, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. I am Cynthia Anderson. I provide one-on-one -on -one coaching programs, teaching business professionals how to market their services to medical practices. It's a different niche in itself. Business to doctor marketing, I like to call it. So it's B B2D. There you go. <laughs> there we go. Question number two, what is the best thing about working with businesses? Well, it's helping them realize their potential because a lot of them think they're crazy where they've implemented some B2B strategies and they wonder, why isn't this working? And they start to feel rejected, defeated. And I've been there in their shoes. I've been there, done that. I've successfully sold to doctors since 2008. So seeing that transformation just warms my heart. That is awesome. Awesome question number three. I'm hearing from other top executives that testimonials and reviews are becoming more critical now, especially video ones. What are your thoughts? Oh, I completely agree. So offering services to medical doctors, they have to trust you and see you as the expert to sign up with their services. So doctors trust the opinions of other doctors. Mm -hmm. So having references, having testimonials from a doctor or somebody that is a trusted advisor, it is imperative to be able to get in front of them. So I agree with you completely. Absolutely, absolutely. Question number four, what advice you share with other companies working in the B2B industry? Go. Okay, excellent. So if you offer services to medical doctors, the ideal process is not to be salesman -y. It's not becoming that salesperson that brags about selling ice to an Eskimo. <laughs> doctors I lose trust if you come off as that sleazy salesperson. So typical B2B approaches like telemarketing or direct mail or Google ads don't work for them. Okay. Don't waste your time, money, energy, or effort. Okay. If you have, if you find yourself having to pitch or convince someone to buy your services, they don't see your value at all. So it starts with understanding who you help, right? Who your ideal niche is, what you help them with, what are the challenges that you solve for them and how you solve them. And this also helps you understand what is your unique selling proposition. Mm -hmm. now, once you understand that, you need to learn about what your prospects, their specific needs are. So like a doctor doesn't walk into an exam room and start writing you a prescription. No, right. they exam you first, right? So yes. this is what we need to do is we're not going to offer them services before knowing anything about them. So take the list of what you help them with all of those challenges and transform those into questions. So if your company can guarantee a practice can become HIPAA compliant, then ask them, how prepared are you to convey your HIPAA compliance when you get audited, right? If you offer telehealth platforms, then ask your prospect, what platform are you using now? Do you like it? Don't you like it? Are there features that you want to see? So in this aspect, you will become the trusted authority and you are there positioning yourself as offering a solution, not pushing yourself on them or having to convince or intimidate or sell them anything. Right. You don't want to go to a doctor and say, hi, my name is Bob. Buy my stuff. Yeah, exactly. And that's what happens when people telemarket too. They pick up the phone. Do you want my services? Right. right. No, you don't, you don't know anything about them. That's right. And I, I don't know about you though, but um, I have a friend who works at the front desk of the doctor's office mm -hmm. and they are so excited every time they get a salesperson to run into the present, you know, the doctor is seeing a patient and saying, you need to stop right now. I got a sales call in their line. You got to come and see his services. Yeah. There we go. Hurry, hurry, hurry. But yeah. They really don't do that. That was sarcasm in case you didn't catch it. <laughs> that is awesome. They don't like that at all. <laughs> they don't. Let's get to question number five. What other top CEOs and business owners in the B2B industry? So like I specific, knowledge as a leader and should be a guest on my podcast. Oh yes. Okay. Sorry. So okay. 
I specifically learn a lot from people. I have what I call mentors that I follow. And one in particular that I've learned a plethora from is uh, Jonathan Palmer. He teaches about content marketing. And because I want my clients to learn about how to become the expert, that's a method is, con is giving delivering your content, delivering your education, becoming the trusted advisor. So he's when I would promote for you. I'll look Jonathan up and we're done here. But number mm -hmm. six, Cynthia, this is the most important question of the podcast. Oh no. Hey, Cynthia, oh. tell me about your first time. Oh. Your first Blushing. <laughs> so my first client with this business, this is, it looked like it was me. So I used to sell services to doctors, medical billing services. This client, my first client was exactly in my shoes. She was struggling. She was wasting her time cold calling. She's spending money on Google ads, feeling rejected, feeling defeated. I, I loved helping her stop all of that ad spend, stop all of that wasted hours, stop crying in a corner because somebody told her no for the 1700th time. Right. right? So I was able to eliminate all of those expenses. And now she spends 30 minutes a day strategically educating her ideal target market, right? Which now she has a clear understanding of who that is and has warm leads coming to her. So it was, <laughs> it's, it's awesome because before she was just giving, she was desperate. She was giving her services away for nothing. And right. now she can charge what she's worth and have them coming to her. I love that story. <laughs> love it there. So Cynthia, you now have two minutes and 25 seconds left. <laughs> awesome. Promo time. I talk really fast. <laughs> yeah, that's about average. You did yeah. pretty good there. Promo time. Ask me a question. You can talk about the weather. Or since the best know when to be concise and when to end, you can end early. Go. Awesome. Okay. So I would encourage anybody watching this, connect with me on LinkedIn. Okay. I am open to new connections. And once you do, I will start to engage with you. I'm going to ask about you and learn how we can support others. I'm a huge believer in networking and supporting others. So you'll get a message from me, not a robot. <laughs> It'll be a message from me asking you how you are, what is your business all about, how I can promote you. So please connect with me on LinkedIn. I would greatly appreciate that. And we can better get to know each other. I love that. I also, also want to add one thing just real quick on there. I wish more people when they connected on Facebook or LinkedIn, their first message to someone should be, do you have any content that you'd like me to engage with? Oh, that's a the, great. Cause good. there's all, I, again, I, I get the, when you start doing the ad people on Facebook marketing, I get you're starting out. I'm not going to judge you, but yeah. don't add me on Facebook and instantly say, you know, send me a message saying buy my stuff. And the same thing with LinkedIn. Right. Well, and that's, that goes again with nobody likes to be sold. And, and yep. when you start selling somebody something with them before even knowing them, you know, it's the same thing is like, I'm not going to start selling you anything. Once I, I want to learn about you. I want to engage with you. So if right. I happen to connect with my ideal prospect, I don't pitch them. I don't sell them. I want to build a relationship and learn about them first. So it's kind of the same concept. I love that. Yes, absolutely. You got 48 seconds left. There's anything else you want to add? I have a question for you. Okay. You've done thousands of these podcasts. Tell me, was there one nugget of information that was new to you? Big, oh. Biggest one was treat your, treat your business like a cup of coffee. Coffee requires four things. Co uh, coffee beans, a cup, water, heat. You got those four things, you can make coffee. Yeah. Now focus on the cream and sugar. <laughs> so that, that's it there. And with that, you pulled it off. Six questions, nine minutes, because the best know when to be concise and when to end. Your website, say it real quick. CynthiaAnderson.com, and that's with an E, Anderson. There we go. It's in the description, and your LinkedIn's in the description because you made me smile. So there we go. <laughs> Cynthia, thank you so much for being on Tip the Hat to you. <laughs> and for everyone else watching or listening, make sure you check out more episodes of the On Fire B2B podcast. I am Bob Clark. Y'all have a wonderful day. Now talk to you later. Bye. Thank you.